Habibi Bahaudie, African Liberation, Peace for you family, uh, greetings to others. <laughs> so, we coming out of another Jews paper, right? Um, I felt this article was relevant for several reasons, um, which I'll go into, you know, and some y'all will figure out on your own. Y'all intelligent people, you feel me? All right, so one reason I felt it was relevant, I'm going to right well, point out right off the bat. So this is the New York Post. So this is the paper, right? So if you notice, they got two pages back to back, right? You see the one in the handcuffs on the left, or it should be y'all left, right? I think I'm getting it right. Um, and then you see this one, right? So they're both murders. Excuse me. This one is a rape. This one is a murder. Kidnapping. I don't know if you notice. Move it closer. So this is the suspect who's in custody for the kidnap murder. And this is the guy in custody for the rape. And you see the you see the age. Brooklyn girl eleven. Now, this is what's cool. If you see at the bottom, can y'all see that? Right at the bottom, you know what it say? It says freak. That was the bold um in all caps. Freak. Julio Cesar Ayala, an alleged MS-13 member. Stop right there. Y'all know who MS-13 is, right? Okay. It's like we kind of know who Bloods and Grips are, right? We know who the KKK is, right? Um, I forgot the Asian gangs. I don't know, whatever. So... I'm going to go into this story on this side. The kidnap murder. The triads. Oh, man. The triads is the... Oh, that's the Asians. Oh, man. Good old... <laughs> the triads. Oh, man. Y'all like my shirt? Just when I'm on the... You know... When I'm selling borders, I have my shirt. I sell houses too, and my number on it, front and back. I average one business card every time I'm out there with the shirt. So, cool marketing. Wrote it in with a little nice magic marker. Um, T-shirt was two dollars. So, dad bags slay not about immigrants, and it's in quotes. Do not appropriate Molly's soul and advancing views she believed were profoundly racist. Rob Tibbetts, father of slain Molly Tibbetts, says. Um, under the photo, they have Heartless, Christian Rivera, an illegal immigrant from Mexico, is behind bars for the murder of Molly Tibbetts. The father of slain Iowa College student Molly Tibbetts blasted people who have been using his daughter's death to promote profoundly racist views a day after uh, President Trump's son published an op-ed blaming Democrats radical open border agenda for her demise so um, number 45 son blamed the Democrats and the open border policy of the Democratic Party, like it's their fault somehow, for the death of this um, cracker female. In the opinion piece, which ran Friday in a Des Moines register, Donald Trump Jr. called Democrats despicable for their responses to Tibbetts' death at the, at the hands of an illegal Mexican immigrant, 
despite the family's repeated requests that Molly's death not be used as a political football. So Bob Tibbetts took to the paper's pages Saturday to lambast those who cynically use the murder to score political points. Okay, so right quick, um, try to always keep one of these on hand and on standby, try JKL. I actually never heard that word before, so we're gonna clear that word real quick. Lambast, L-A-M-B-A-S-T. To beat or excoriate, geez. <laughs> so the father took to the papers to excoriate those who cynically, y'all know what cynical, cynically used the murder to score political points using Trump's Jr.'s own words against him. I encourage the debate on immigration. This is the peck of wood, the, you know, the white bitch's father. I encourage the debate on immigration. There is great merit in its reasonable outcome. But do not appropriate Molly's soul and advancing views she believe were profoundly racist, he wrote. The act grievously extends the crime that stole Molly from our family and is, to quote 45, heartless and despicable. No, quote 45 Jr. So let's, I don't know. What number would be 45 Jr.? <laughs> I don't know. Um, it was the only time he mentioned Trump Jr. by name in the column, which was published in the same paper one day after the president's son. Allow us to grieve in privacy and with dignity, Rob continued. At long last, show some decency. So the Pecker Woods crying out, like, to his Pecker Wood brothers, like, yo, don't use this, my daughter's death because she was murdered by a Mexican and say, we got to get rid of Mexicans and this is why. Sounds familiar? On behalf of my family and Molly's memory, I'm imploring you to stop. While Trump Jr. used his soapbox to renew his father's unfulfilled campaign promise, of building a wall along the nation's southern border, Rob Tibbetts sought to deflect blame away from the Latino community. The person who was accused of taking Molly's life is no more a reflection of the Hispanic community as white supremacists are of all white people. So he's kind of going in. He's saying, if you're saying that this Mexican that killed my daughter, if you're saying that this Mexican that killed my daughter means that all Mexicans are bad and they gotta go, then the white supremacists mean all white people are bad and gotta go. So, you know, that's kind of big. Um, Christian Bahina Rivera, 24, is suspected of abducting and killing Tibbetts while she was out jogging. Dang, crazy, them. I ain't gonna say it. Um. I'm sorry, I just, I don't really have no empathy. Uh, investigators say the Mexican national overstayed a visa and lived in the area for four to seven years. He previously worked as a farmhand for a prominent Republican family in the area. Since his identity was released, Republican politicians have used his immigration status to argue for tougher borders and stricter immigration laws. So the Republicans is saying, look, we got to get tough on these border laws. And this is what this is. This is why the Mexicans are dangerous. Ah, ah. They overstay their visas. And when they do, it's causing harm to our society in X, Y and Z ways. Now, this is what's cool that I just picked up. The suspect that murdered this young female, Molly, the suspect, was working for a Republican family. So y'all was feeding him. Y'all was cool with Mexicans at that time. But now that 
a Mexican just so happened to murder a white female. It's like down with all Mexicans. So that's that's pretty cool. And it's coming from the same group of people. An Idaho neo-Nazi group issued racist robocalls implying harm to Mexicans. Oh, this is deep. An Idaho neo-Nazi group is threatening Mexicans. Now look. First of all, this is the Mexican, this is Mexico, right? So border, boom. This is Mexico. Iowa, Des Moines, where they was at, is right here. So you blaming the border and he's all the way states over. I can see if this happened in Texas and you blaming the border. Even Oklahoma, maybe, you know, Louisiana, right? But it's all the way up here and you blaming this right here. So that's, but Idaho is over here. So you got states over, Iowa, boom, and Idaho neo-Nazi group is threatening Mexicans. So that's how they, that's how they gangster with it. They states over with it. Like you ain't even now state, but we starting up on Mexicans over here. We don't have to kill them all but we do have to deport them all. This is what the neo-Nazi group is saying in Idaho. We don't have to kill all Mexicans, but we do got to deport all of them. All of them. Rob Tibbetts apologized for the vitriol on behalf of his innocent family. To the Hispanic community, my family stands with you and offered its heartfelt apology, his Obed continued, Obed Paus. That you've been that you've been beset by the circumstances of Molly's death is wrong. My stepdaughter, whom Molly loves so dearly, is Latina. Her sons, Molly's cherished nephews, and my grandchildren are Latino. That means I am Hispanic. I am African. I am Asian. <laughs> I am your repeat. My blood runs from every corner of the earth because I am an American. <laughs> Proud to be a citizen of America, KKK. Beautiful, ain't it? Oh, man. So that's the end of the article. A couple um, points from this. <clears throat> this is relevant because it's not that relevant to black people. Slightly. This is about Mexicans and the war on Mexicans, right? So I'm highlighting it for the Mexicans that may see this, as well as for us Africans to see just from a different standpoint, the war on another people. So, so maybe, you know, maybe it'll sink in a little better how bad this cracker is for all of us, even themselves. Because this cracker comes down on every race. Now, also the, the relevance and like the correlation is there's like a perceived quote unquote black and brown unity um, unified front or whatever in this country. Um, I mean, it doesn't really exist, but well, for the brown people, they do benefit off of, you know, like um, the civil rights movement and all of that, for example, you know, affirmative action. Um, that was for minorities, which, you know, the quote unquote brown people are so-called minorities and white females. So they benefit like that, you know, of black and brown unity, you know, but um, I just don't really see it from their side. I see it from our side because, you know, we, we, we believe in this. We are the world. We can unify with everybody. So I see it from our side, but I, I just don't really see it from their side. So this so-called perceived, this, this black and brown unity, right? Um, another reason why it was relevant. When it comes to 
this country, right? America KKK. Us as African people, black, we're in last place. And we're at the bottom when it comes to who's getting it worse. Right? So, for example, in India, right? The darker you are, you're you're on the bottom of society. So the very jet black people in India, which there are jet black people in India, the jet black skinned people in India, I'm not saying they black, the jet black skinned people in India are at the bottom of society. That's just how it is um, with the colorism or darkism. Um, So... In this country, it's kind of the same. The darker your skin is, and just because the dark-skinned people here are African, that makes Africans, Blacks, just generally, they put us at the bottom. And when I say last place, when it comes to economics and these sort of things, you know, just things like who owning property, you know, we're in last place as far as percentages of own property. As far as our dollars circulating in our community, we're in last place. As far as owning businesses, we're in last place. As far as, uh, 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 that's all I'm going to do because, you know, I don't want to get get us down. So, it's about the war in Mexico. Now, <clears throat> who, we're in last place. The, the group right above us is the so-called brown people. They're right above us. And when it comes to those things I named, the homes and the businesses, and they're right above us in second to last place, right? And as far as treatment that we receive on a general basis in this country, the United States, African people, black people face it the worst. The so-called brown people face it the next worst, right? Another thing. Shout out to the queen, um, Michelle Alexander. If anybody don't know, familiar with the book, The New Jim Crow. Great, great, great read. Definitely get it. Um, the sister's very knowledgeable. Um, it took a, you know, she, she put her time in. Took her like eight, nine years to, to do the book. Um, the New Jim Crow, Mass Incarceration in the Age of Colorblindness. Right? So... The prison industrial complex, that's a big, big, big uh, institutionalized, racist, a ra- it's a big racist institution, a big racist system where African people face it the worst with stop and frisk and all of this madness. You feel me? Um. And Mexicans, or uh, my fault, brown people, Hispanics, whatever, they face it. Their numbers is in their work, you know. Um, they're second. They're right. They're second. You feel me? Um, like one out of three black males will be incarcerated, or it's something crazy like that. And like one out of five. Or one out of nine. No, it's like one out of five. Will either be incarcerated. No, damn. It's something crazy. Like one third of all black males is either incarcerated or under correctional control, parole or probation. So if you add up the amount of African people that's in prison right now and the amount of African people that's on probation and parole under correction and control, that equals out males, that equals out to one third of the population in America KKK when it comes to black males. Um, that's a lot. Now, the so-called brown people, they're in second place when it comes to the prison industrial complex, when it comes to the war on drugs and all of this madness. They're after them second. And his reasons for that. Um,
so yeah, I think that's it. We're gonna end it here. Um, I just want to show y'all a little relevance to y'all. See how the stories are side by side like that. Both, you know. I mean, the story is the story. Not to say they didn't do it or whatever, but this is made to demonize them. The same it is with us. The same as, well, no, it's not the same. It's worse with us. We get it so bad that like an ancestor like Trayvon Martin can be murdered and they will have pictures like this of him. But the Peckerwood that's murdered, this is the picture they have of her, Becky. You feel me? So, um, there's lessons in that for those who understand. And I'm gonna end it here. Black power, black power, all the time. I be before Holy African liberation. That's what it's all about. That's all I think about. That's all I live for. I'm gonna put my part in to help liberate an African people. Or I think about all them beautiful ancestors um, that came before me, you know, that gave so much of their time. And I'm talking about people like Dr. Wilson, you know, the great um, ancestor, Dr. Francis Plus Wilson, peace be upon her. You know, 40, 50 years, like we got ancestors, the great uh, Dr. John Henry Clark, Dr. Ben, I mean, and on and on and on. Um, men and women that that really put that work in for our race so you know i have to be one of those people um uh, i don't have to do it on the scale that they did and get the notoriety and all of this and you know but i have to follow in that line of divine you know i listen to their lectures all the time i'm reading their books all the time um and also the great scholars that's a law that's fighting i gotta do it for them the ancestors that that left the work and, and then you got the warriors right now that's out there fighting so so she's a literary warrior literary scholar we need those this is her battlefield and she's very good at it she does lectures as well. And I mean, yo, I don't watch some of her lectures. It'd be a lot of crackers in her lectures. And the impeccables. Because she lectures um, a lot of... Um, and I forgot the degree that she has. But it's people, you know, that's in a certain degree field of pursuing that and all of this. Um, but yeah, man, so shout out to the Queen Michelle Alexander. And she is straight, black, and proud. Beautiful black family. And straight, black, pride.